we're winding down the year, or maybe you're thinking about what's next for your business. Now, I find that this is really easy when you start your business journey, but it actually gets a little more difficult the longer you've been in business. And you are so busy getting the work done in your business that it's really challenging to figure out what your next step should be. In fact, I had a call with um, a business owner today that's knee deep in the woods and hasn't had the time to think about what that next bold growth move is in their business. Well, howdy everyone. My name is Leslie Hassler. I own Your Biz Rules and I work with women-led service businesses to grow and scale in a way that's profitable and sustainable so that they can build brighter futures for themselves and their families and their communities. And today we're talking about five simple steps to achieving your business vision. And here's the kicker, the vision aspect of it really comes from the owner. It really is that role that until you are no longer in your business is going to be driven by you. You're the visionary, but it is one of those roles that are very, it's very hard to step into to be comfortable with making those choices, to setting the vision. And when you don't take the time to define this and to be clear about it, then you'll find that you're frustrated. You're frustrated with your progress. You're frustrated with what your business has become or will become. Um, you can feel stuck. Like a lot of times when the vision for the future isn't very clear, a business will plateau. Like they just won't get the growth that they want because they don't know what it means or what that ultimately will help them achieve. And so we're going to share some tips here because when you get a clear vision, so many good things happen. A, your employees can support you. Your team can actually be active in the doing of constructing this vision, of making this vision happen for the business because there's clarity there's something clear everybody understands it and it's compelling so it's that motivator that inspiration the reason why you're doing what you're doing right all of these things start to breed and increase confidence for you as the owner but also for your team like they start acting in a totally different way when they're on board with the vision because it's so clear and it's so compelling. And the knowing what to do next, that almost becomes automatic because it's just clear what will help lead you to making that vision happen. So here are our five tips. So we're gonna talk about five of them, okay? So the first one is a little oxymoron-ish, but it's to dream for clarity. Part of a vision is being really big, tremendous. And if you look at things like a vision statement in a business, that is a statement that's almost unattainable. I said almost, right? Like it's big enough that it's almost unattainable, but it's compelling enough that you want to try anyways. So that's that dream component of your vision for your business. It's got to be big enough, juicy enough, um, that it makes your mouth water, that you're like, oh my gosh, that is what I want. Now, the clarity part of this comes from asking yourself or having somebody else ask, ask you, well, what does that look like? What does that feel like? What would it how would you know that your vision has become a reality? Now, one of the exercises I love to use in this when I'm working with clients on really defining their vision is to use the five senses. Because here's what's kind of crazy. The saying, what would it look like? What would it sound like? What would it taste? What would you feel? What would you smell? All of those sensory things. When you attach it to the dream component and you actually, I know it feels silly, 
but you actually do it and think, what would I hear? What would I smell? What would it taste like? What would it feel like? That is how you actually bring concreteness, um, clarity to the vision. And when you do feel, hear, sense, see, smell, you'll get this really warm, fuzzy sense of satisfaction. Like you'll know you're on the right track. So that is just one little way to help define the clarity. But being clear and being concise and being compelling is how you will get everyone else on your team to rally behind this vision. So that's step one, dream for clarity. Step two, okay, so now we've got to move from the clouds, the dream, and we got to come down to the ground. So this is about strategy and action. There are a million and one ways to do business. There are a million and one strategies to use in your business. They all work and none of them can work. So it's really about choosing the right one for you, your business, your vision right now. Like what makes the most sense? What is achievable? What moves the needle, right? And identifying these strategies, prioritize them, and then outlining just some basic actions around this. You do not need a thesis, <laughs> but you need a direction. And uh, the analogy that I'll give you here is think of it like your trip. You know, I love to travel, so I always use travel analogies. But think of it like a trip. Your vision is choosing where you're going to go. The strategy is, are we going by plane, trains, automobiles, walking? How are we getting there? Okay, and then even in that, you choose to fly. Well, now you go Delta, American, Southwest, how, private jet, I like that one. How are, we, how are we getting there? And then you can see, I've got to buy a ticket. I got to choose a date. I got to see how like the strategy drives the action. So that's what we want to do in step two is we want to take it from that that kind of almost impossible vision and bring it down to earth a bit so that we can start taking steps to getting there. Our third one is to take imperfect action. Here's the kicker. When it comes to really achieving your business vision, you can't overthink it. If you try to be perfect, if you try not to make a mistake, you're going to miss out on a lot of learning. You'll also likely struggle longer with achieving your perfection than you will through failing through imperfect action. Imperfect action means you know enough. You are guessing. You might have some strong basis for those guesses, but you're going to have to test it out. You're going to have to try. And if it doesn't work, you're okay with it not working. You're going to try again. Now there is um, something we do in our business and what I do with my clients. Um, and we do these 90 day sprints, if you will. They're really about if we take the big vision, which is like, okay, where are we going to be in three years? What's it gonna look like? We've broken it down to some goals, some strategies. We've prioritized. Now we're taking imperfect action, but we do it in 90 day sprints because here is what I have found. In 90 days, you have to be focused. You have to choose, right? In 90 days, you can achieve something. You can achieve a lot of things actually, but you can't achieve them if you're trying to do too many things. So you have to be very, very choosy. And then you can start to see the results. So that learning aspect, that testing and measuring part that comes with imperfect action, 90 days goes by really fast, doesn't it? But you can focus long enough on this imperfect action to learn, see what the results are, decide if it's something that works or doesn't work or needs to work better, right? And you can improve on it. These little mini, mini years, if you will, they are how you get that momentum moving in your business. And when you get the momentum, the vision comes along. The vision becomes reality. So taking imperfect action. That's our third tip, right? Four is keep it visual. I have found 
I'm just trying to think in my years of working with other people, almost universally, everyone's visual, right? If you see it, you are reminded of it. And there's a couple of benefits to this. One is you can track things, right? Two is if you've got team and you've got this visual vision and a visual strategy and visual action, right? Everybody knows. Even if they forget and they're too embarrassed to ask, they can go walk over to wherever it is and see it. So it's like this constant reinforcement. There's also some really fun things that happen when you keep things visual. Number one, your subconscious goes to work for you. Now we love it, I love it, when your subconscious works for you because it actually works quicker without hurdles, without blocks than our logical brain ever can. And so it can help leapfrog. So we always wanna give <laughs> our subconscious the ability to help us leapfrog to achieving our vision. And when your subconscious is working, little things happen like easily, just being conscious or being reminded or having that visual, that can give you 10% growth. That's not hard, that's pretty easy. Who wouldn't want that, right? You'd take it today, I bet. But it also helps your brain see potential opportunities come, take advantage of them quicker and put them into action faster so that, that that vision is being achieved. And I kind of, if you've ever felt like, wow, all the pieces are coming to play, all the pieces are finally locking together, that oftentimes is because you've set up enough reminders in enough different ways. You've given it intention and focus that it's becoming a reality. It just feels easy. Who doesn't need more easy in their lives? All right, so our last tip, our last tip. Um, I don't know if you've ever washed you know, your hair and you've read the back of the bottle. It says, rinse, lather, repeat. We need this in business. <laughs> this should be written on every business owner's wall. Rinse, lather, repeat, okay? Or lather, rinse, repeat, repeat, lather, rinse. No, I think it's rinse, lather, repeat. I could be wrong. I digress. But part of that in the business, what it looks like when I think of, of that, is that you track, you celebrate, and you revise. So you're tracking. That's the consciousness part of it. It's also part of the visual. You celebrate your wins because, yes, that's what you want to see more of. And then you revise. You improve. You use that tracking to tell you what the results of your testing, your learning was. Here's the key of why this iterative process is so important in business right now. Business changes at a lightning fast speed. Our old paradigms of how we grew a business and how we made money in the business and how hard it needed to be, all of those things have been shattered. They have all been shattered. And in order for you to really capitalize on this growth and this rate of change in our world today, you've got to be able to do a more iterative process, something that enables you to move quicker, but generates better and bigger results. That is how you're actually gonna be able to achieve your business vision. And when you do that, you get more done, you move faster, you work smarter, you transform your business and you give your vision reality and life. That is why it's so important, for guys, that you have these conversations with other like-minded business owners who are trying to do similar things, even if it's a little different than it's been done before in the past. And that's one of the reasons why we brought together the Your Biz Rules community, because too often people try to do this alone for too long. And when we come together, when you have multiple viewpoints to consider, when you've got somebody who's encouraging you and supporting you, um, giving you space to get some feedback or get another set of eyes on things, you move quicker. You get the good work that you want to get done faster. 
So, hey, if you're looking for that community, we would love to help you. Just reach out to me and I can share more about that um, with you through our messaging. So that's it for today, guys. Tell me, what is your vision? How are you going to achieve it? Which one of these tips do you need to put into work in your own business in order to see things happen? So that's it for today, guys. I hope you're doing well. And until next week, we'll be talking with you soon. I'm Leslie Hassler with Your Biz Rules Business Coaching.